Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love Island UK Season 11, Episode 11. Listen, I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. You ready, Blair? I'm ready. Let's go. Well, Jess is talking to the girls. She is feeling like she did what was best for herself. Mm -hmm. Harriet says that she's not feeling that great. She knows that things aren't really over with Jess and Ronnie completely. There's still this triangle lingering in the air. It's so funny. The one that is saying that she did something for herself is the one that's keeping the triangle open. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's really funny, but continue. And Ronnie's talking to the guys. He knows he didn't treat Jess that well, so he tells Sean to enjoy himself. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie does not care. No. If you're coupled up with someone, he thinks that you deserve to be with that person. Mm -hmm. So he really doesn't feel the need to pull Jess for a conversation. Wow. I feel like that speaks even more to how much Ronnie doesn't feel for Jess because mm -hmm. you was pulling Harriet a whole bunch of times mm. and you wasn't in a couple with her. But honestly, Harriet was going to him too. So. Exactly. Yeah. I think, I think we are learning more and more. I don't know about y'all, but Ronnie is becoming my favorite character on the show. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Joey moved up a couple steps in this episode too. Um, he's the alpha male of the villa, mm. meaning that he's not he, most of the time he's going to be sitting down chilling all the guys like talking to him they like going to him asking for his advice and things like that you saw what i your last episode and things like that yeah he's just like the guy that just laid back he's like the bad guy you know how like back in the day you have the guy that had the, the black leather jacket with the shades he's just that guy mm. sometimes um in life you don't get to pick who's that guy it's just he's just that guy you mm -hmm. know well, Jess pulls Ronnie for a chat. Yeah. He can understand why she made the decision she made to choose Sean. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, it's tit for tat. Basically, you're playing with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she doesn't want to feel second best. Mm -hmm. And at this point for her, she feels like it's good that they have some space. What mm -hmm. will be will be. Jess says to Ronnie as they're walking away from their chat that she won't be in good, as good in bed as me. And Ronnie says, well, we'll see. Mm. Listen here, man. <laughs> Jess, I don't know how many other ways he could say to you that he's not that concerned. Listen here, man. Ronnie, they sitting down. First of all, how you have that speech about how you're the prize, about how you are basically um, the one who's ended it off because he didn't respect your deadline, and then pull him for a chat freshly from elimination or freshly, exactly. from, freshly from recoupling, rather, mm -hmm. not, not elimination. Sean is just, as Ronnie said it, he's a good boy. Yeah. You get a sweet boy, rather. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, poor Sean. Hopefully someone can come into this villa who is fully interested in him. Yes. Because Jess is just trying to use him to get over Ronnie. And it's not helping. because Or to get back at him. And Ronnie sees it. It, yeah. only, it only works if I don't see it coming. Yeah. But if I see it coming, it's just like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Harriet is telling Mimi and Joey that mm -hmm. she's happy. She's in a couple with Ronnie. Yeah. Um, but she's not trying to be too happy because she still doesn't know what his decision is. Of course not. Well, Ronnie ends up coming over and Joey is asking them, you know, playing producer as Joey does. Of course. Uh, what are the odds that y'all are going to kiss? Hmm. Harriet doesn't know. And Ronnie is just kind of silent, just kind of looking like, mm, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Harriet's happy that them sharing a bed together, they can explore a more intimate side of their relationship. Mm -hmm. And Harriet tells Joey, you know, as Ronnie walks away, that she thinks that she has just a more of a like sexual attraction to Ronnie than Jess. Mm -hmm. And Joey agrees based off of what he sees. Yeah, I do think there is more sexual tension between them two. I would agree. I think with mm -hmm. Jess, um, I think she really likes him. Yeah. Right. And whatever she was taught growing up in her childhood to basically put on this wall. Um, and then on top of that, the fact that Ronnie and Jess was paired together and you see Harriet say like, Ronnie could just keep eye effing me like the whole day and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. I just think like Ronnie just have this mystique about him that kind of adds to his uh, favor and, 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 and leverage. Yeah. So Harriet wants to explore that mystique, in my opinion. Right. Jess is happy to have this time without Ronnie. She's sitting mm -hmm. with Sean, Harriet, and I believe Joey. Um, but the conversation turns to Jess talking about how Harriet isn't very direct mm. and how we're just very two different people in a very kind of condescending way. Harriet 
she feels like Jess is making digs at her, but mm -hmm. at the same time saying that, you know, I'm upset, but it's not pointed at you, yet you're making digs at me. Mm -hmm. And Jess is just like, look, if you don't want to be my friend, you don't want to be my friend. Like, I'm very blunt. I'm direct with my jokes. And if you don't like that, that's fine. I have other best friends in the villa. We don't have to be friends. And the guys are basically just like, you know, we can be different and not mm -hmm. have an issue. Like, this doesn't have to be a thing. But I think that Jess is just super upset because yeah. Ronnie is not sweating her. No. And she wants him to. Mm -hmm. And every time she has a conversation with him, it's like she wants to apply the pressure, but he is not feeling it. No. <laughs> so, so Jess is just really, I feel like working herself up. She, she needs to peep what's actually happening mm -hmm. and, and cool out, you know? Yeah. The thing about Jess is for one, I don't remember and y'all can correct me. I remember Harriet asking to be your friend. Um, actually I remember a couple episodes ago that you went up to Harriet basically like, yeah, I'm coming to talk to you just to let you know I'm not really mad at you um, because I know how it feels to be alone. I know how it feels when someone isolates you and things like that. So I'm just letting you know just just to take that off your chest that you don't have to worry about it. And Harriet was in the confession like, I don't feel that way. Yeah. Like, I have friends here. Mm -hmm. So Jess is basically, like, just trying to talk her way through it. That's all she's doing. She's talking through the hurt. Mm -hmm. and, and and here we call it tweeting through the hurt. You get what I'm saying? She's basically talking to her and saying, like, you know, we're different people. You know, we ain't got to be the same. And Harry's like, okay, like, fine. <laughs> like, I, I mean, like, I don't, know what the, I don't know what you want me to say. We are different people. But, yeah. you know, Jess is just hurting. That's all. Yeah, as they're getting ready for bed, um, Io was not feeling Mimi's speech. Mm -hmm. And the ladies tell Mimi that it was kind of direct. Mm -hmm. So he really doesn't plan on kissing her. I don't know what Mimi... Um, I think this was Mimi's way of getting back at him in some way of kind of like... Because remember, he came to her basically saying like, you know, I don't want to kiss anymore and things like that while I'm still dealing with Uma and things like that last episode. And... Uma basically ended it by saying, like, you know, I don't want to be in this love triangle thing. Now that she actually has Ayo, I think she's trying to put pressure on Ayo. And I think that only works if she has another option. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work if your only option is Ayo. Um, even seeing this episode when the new guy came in, I didn't see Mimi go over there and talk to him or try to do anything because you know what she's going to do? She's going to stare. Yeah. That's what Mimi's going to do, right? So those things, though, that bluntness and those ultimatums and those, like, you know, straightforwardness only work if you have options and uh, Mimi don't have them. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Well, Ronnie and Harriet, they make out and they get to waking people up, including Jess. Man. And she has to leave the room. <laughs> They was making out, making out, of course, you know, Nicole and, and, and like her man, Kieran, is going to make out and do and do their thing. But you already knew Ronnie was going to make out with Harry that night. Mm -hmm. You already knew it. So it's the next morning mm -hmm. and Jess is saying that she heard kissing all night. Mm -hmm. Joey's trying to figure out who was doing the kissing. Yeah. And Ronnie raises his hand and points to himself. It was coming from his but direction. Joey was like, was it coming from over there? <laughs> Ronnie was like, it was coming from over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, Jess thinks that Ronnie was being disrespectful. Mm. And she feels clearly what they had wasn't special and it's pissing her off. And honestly, Jess, I'm just like, stay with that thought. It was not special. Mm. So let it go. She can't. Let it go. She lost. She <sighs> lost. That's, that's and she's just coming across so angry. And, and it's just like, it's not being reciprocated. Like, it would be one thing if they're in a love triangle and he really doesn't know what he wants. Mm -hmm. uh, which I feel like what was a situation at one point. But as we're going along, Ronnie is just open to whatever and whoever. Mm -hmm. And I think Jess needs to start to realize that because she is literally working herself into a tizzy. She gave him all the power. Yeah. And, and now she's mad when he's using it, mm -hmm. right? You already let it be known. For one, when Ronnie made that speech episodes ago, you should have dropped him right then and there and started picking up other options. But here's the thing about it. This is why y'all women are doing Love Island wrong on, on like the UK version. Yo, you have no other options. So you have no leverage. You have nothing to make basically Ronnie jealous about. Now you got Sean and Sean, and you don't even want Sean. So it's like, it's one thing if you was like, you know what, I am not going to deal with you and you actually have a real option number two, option number three, but you basically put all your eggs in one basket with Ronnie to the point where you gave him an ultimatum and deadline. Why are you doing that with somebody that like on a show? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So the fact that you even gave him a deadline, it just shows you put all your eggs in the basket and Ronnie just left it there. And now you're like, you know what? It... He is so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It was never special. It showed me what type of guy he is. 
the type of guy you like. Yeah. It just is what it is. Well, Sean brings just coffee. Poor Sean. Omar brings Uma coffee. And outside, they have breakfast for the couples. Mm hmm. Um, so they're all talking over their breakfast mm-hmm. and Jess shares that in a relationship, she is a softy. It just takes a while. Okay. And Sean is hoping that they can progress into that direction. Okay. Uma and Omar, he says that he might have a love at first sight thing going on with her because he asked her if she's ever experienced that, which she really hasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he's I, lying, by the way. Yeah. He's, he's just trying to schmooze her. He's lying because mm-hmm. last time I checked. If, you, if if it was really love at first sight and you really had interest in Uma, why didn't you just go for Uma when you first came into the villa? Mm-hmm. Like, like, get the boys off the island. And Omar, I don't want to turn my focus to you, but you're just lying. You're just lying. Ayo's been getting to know Mimi and he's enjoying it and he feels like what they have is real. Okay, play a player. <laughs> Nicole says everything she looks for, she finds in Kieran and she's like kind of like, what's the point of trying to explore something else? She's happy with where she's at. That's nice. Harriet uh, is talking about just her family dynamic. She's a middle child. Mm-hmm. She thinks her mom would like Ronnie as well as her brothers. And she talks about her dad and mm-hmm. the company he has. So they're just getting a little bit deeper into knowing each other beyond the, the surface level. I don't think Ronnie cares, but it's nice to hear. Yeah. Joey feels that Samantha has opened up more. Uh, she does have a fear of getting hurt. Mm-hmm. He feels that they are growing as a couple. Okay, nice. And then the bombshells drop. Mm. So into the villa to break up their beautiful breakfast dates uh, is Tiffany, 25, Will, 23, and Grace, 25, who knows somebody in the villa and was wondering if they're going to rekindle things. Your first thoughts when you saw them walk in the bombshells. I thought this is a good looking group of people. Um, That was pretty much it. I wasn't impressed. Okay. I wasn't impressed by the girls. um, And I wasn't impressed by Will. Will is the guy name, right? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't impressed by Will. He had a nice tagline and things like that. But I was like, mm, I'm, I don't know. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah, so Joey is shocked when they all walk in because he knows Grace. Mm. She tells, uh, he tells Samantha that he knows her mm-hmm. and that they did used to see each other. Mm. And uh, as they're getting to know each other, sitting around, uh, Sean finds out that Tiffany actually doesn't live too far from where he is. Mm. So as far as uh, the new couples, uh, as far as everyone, they're all interested in talking to everybody. Yeah. Tiffany asks if anyone is closed off. And Nicole tells Kieran, uh, you can speak up if you want to. And Kieran does not. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts on that was, that's odd, Kieran. Like, you guys are so into each other. And I know Nicole was saying, Kieran, you can speak for us. But Nicole, you could have spoke for y'all or at least yourself. Mm-hmm. So that I found that to be a little bit um, odd. Why they didn't want to just be forthcoming with that. I told y'all, I think it was last episode I said, I said, keep your eyes on Kieran. Mm-hmm. Keep your eyes on it because it's too early to to be closed off you this is still the original group mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying you haven't even been to the other island you haven't even seen all the other bombshells come in um one thing i did pick up on is when i realized that joey and grace knew each other samantha looked automatically older mm-hmm. like samantha just looked like the wife now yeah and like and now the mistress just walked in um i really hope i really do that tiffany and sean hit it off i want tiffany and sean to be a real couple. I, I want Sean to have a reset to where he's not talking to someone's sloppy seconds. I want him to actually start with the ground floor with somebody and actually build a real relationship that the fans can vote on. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That he can actually have a real relationship besides you bringing coffee, you doing everything and you can everything you can in your power to try to impress this girl, but she just don't want you. So I want him and Tiffany to be together. Mm -hmm. So the guys are huddled around together and Will makes it known that Uma caught his eye. Mm. Ronnie is glad he didn't do the deadline Mm. (laughs) because he is wide open. Yeah, yeah. Joey is talking about how pretty much everybody's still open and he tells him like, look, you're more than welcome to talk to Samantha as much as you want. Listen, we all know Everybody's like, well, dang, you ain't claiming her in no type of way. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, the girls are all talking and Grace shares that she met Joey um, in Ibiza. They had a holiday romance. It lasted for a couple months after that, but then it ended in just a kind of a cold way. Yeah. And they haven't seen each other for over a year, but he did hit her up a couple months just to check in, to see how she was doing, just to see if they could start chatting again. Mm-hmm. Well, Grace 
And I just loved this. I was just like, this is such like a boss girl move. She pulls Kieran and Sean. She's mm. just like, no time to sit around and waste time and just hang out with the girls. Mm-hmm. I'm here to meet my guy. Exactly. So she pulls Kieran and Sean to try to get to know them and see where they're at when it comes to their couples. Mm-hmm. So Sean says that it's a pleasant surprise that, you know, she's here, that the bombshells are here. Mm-hmm. And Kieran t- tells her that, you know, it would be hard for him to turn his head. He doesn't come right out and say that he's closed off, mm. but he just repeats that, yeah, it would just be very hard for somebody to turn my head. Interesting. Doesn't Interesting. doesn't sound like you're saying it can't be done. Mm. So then Samantha and Harriet talk. Okay. Samantha wouldn't be bothered if they both were meeting somebody new. She just doesn't want to be like left over by herself. Well, that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Or you can. This is what I'm talking about. You could go talk to Will. Yeah. Like like like. Or you could talk to Ayo. Or you could talk to Ronnie, or you could talk to Omar. Like these guys, like there's plenty of guys to go around. You don't ever have to be left on the shelf on Love Island. You choose to be left on the shelf on Love Island, in my opinion. Right. Well, Harriet is talking about how Ronnie jumps from girl to girl, so mm-hmm. she really doesn't know exactly where his head is at. And honestly, I know Harriet is still in this like love triangle with Ronnie and Jess, mm-hmm. but I feel like Harriet is more aware of how the situation is. She yeah. sees that Ronnie is kind of just doing his own thing mm-hmm. and she's not pressing or pressuring him to make a decision because like she said before, when she was having conversations with him, I think that he really doesn't know. And I think it's hard for Jess because she thinks that Ronnie is kind of being deceptive and secretive. But Mm -hmm. Harriet is like, if you look at him, you see what he does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think that's that's saving Harriet a little bit of heartbreak and also allowing her to keep herself open to new conversations and people and situations and not walk around the villa so doggone mad. So, well, here's the thing about it. Ronnie just had only thing Ronnie is doing is he's just not making a choice. Yeah. That's all he's doing. Like he, it's not one it's one thing if he's making one person feel special and then making the other person feel less than, he's mm-hmm. making no one feel special. Yeah. He's just like I'm 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 going to do I'm going to treat all of y'all the same. Mm-hmm. And the only problem you have with it is that it's all of y'all. But other than that, I'm treating everybody the same. Bad. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Samantha realizes how much Joey's been cheesing and is just like just acting brand new now that this girl has mm-hmm. come. So Grace pulls Omar for a chat Uh and he says that there's a vibe between him and Uma, but he's still very much open. Um, Omar did catch Grace's eye Uh and she says that she loves a London boy Mm. and she enjoyed the conversation. So we'll see how things progress with them. Yeah. She said outside of this experience that he would have been her type Mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. So, um, Omar, what happened to the love at first sight thing you was trying to throw at Uma? Lies. <laughs> or game. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's weak game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want... Here's, here's, here's what I want. I do want it to shake up to where I want to see what it looks like when Uma actually do like someone. I want to see Ayo's reaction to it. Mm-hmm. Because she don't like Omar. It's not, it's not going to come through Omar. So I wonder, since Will says, you know, Uma caught my eye, um, I wonder how that will look when she's genuinely into Will and how Aya will feel about it. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Okay. So Mimi asked Ronnie how his date was Mm -hmm. with breakfast this morning. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it was great. Tiffany looks good, don't she? Mm. (laughs) Well, Tiffany comes over and pulls Ronnie for a chat. And they talk about the fact that he is ready for love. Okay. And Tiffany is his type. She says Ronnie is definitely her type. So the attraction is there for the both of them. Of course. Harriet, Nicole, and Will talk. Will pulls them both and tells them that he has a list of his favorite girls and they're definitely on the list. Mm -hmm. They fill him in on their couples and Nicole tells him that she can't see somebody coming in and changing her mind. Okay. Harriet enjoyed the conversation with him and would like to get to know him some more. Interesting. Interesting. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, Samantha and Joey talk. He shares that he and Grace talked a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. Samantha's fine if he wants to get to know her. Um, and Joey is telling her that, look, like, you're acting like 
I already made a decision. Like, I'm just trying to get to know the girl. Mm -hmm. And Samantha's already pulling herself out of the race. And he's asking her, why are you being so abrupt? And she says, you know, you have a history with her. I mean, she's unbelievable. Look Mm -hmm. at her. And Joey's like, nothing's even happened yet. Samantha just asks him to tell me what you're going to do. Don't be like Ronnie. And he tells her that he wouldn't disrespect her in that way. I'm like, guys, you need to stop making promises to these girls. Everybody's single in here. Okay. I don't understand it. I really don't understand. Samantha is not your PO. You do not need to check in with her when you want to have some time with Grace. And then on top of that, like, she already gave you the okay to to explore. I just was like, okay. Yeah. And things like that. And the thing that's interesting about that, even though Samantha tried to play and put a facade that she doesn't care, she's over there cussing and all that stuff, talking about who gets an F to she had. I'm I'm just like, hey, listen, you're already losing Mm -hmm. at Love Island. Go explore someone else. But But you about to lose your meal ticket. Yeah. And that's what it's really about. So, Nicole and Kieran have a chance to connect. Yeah. And it seems like they're forgetting what they told each other. Mm. (laughs) They both said they were closed off, but Nicole's talking about how she didn't say she was closed off. Mm. She just doesn't think anybody would be able to turn her head. And Kieran is like, well, doesn't that essentially mean you're closed off? And he says, well, if you're not going to say you're closed off, then neither am I. And she says, you know, she's not going to get to know the new guy. And we come around to the fact that she is closed off. Mm. So, we'll see. I mean. This made me. This made me think mm-hmm. that you got to keep your eyes on Nicole. The right guy haven't came in yet. Yeah. And now you're forgetting on what was told and things like that. And I think, Kira, and listen, I already don't trust the guy. I already think, like, if the right girl come in, he's going to talk. But he's just being respectful. That's the only difference, right? Mm-hmm. But the right guy haven't came in. And she just basically tested the waters with him, in my opinion. And basically, like, hey, we said we're not closed off, right? Um, no, yes, kind of. <laughs> Listen, watch your eyes. Keep your eyes on the cold. And I really thought they were locked in, but apparently it, things could go either way at this point. Mm-hmm. So it's nighttime. Jess just wants the drama to end. I think Jess, she's at this the, point, she's the only one with the drama. You're the drama. Mm-hmm. At this point, you're the drama. Grace and Joey talk. Uh, they're happy to see each other. Mm-hmm. Um, he apologizes for how he ended their fling, mm-hmm. um, and she appreciates his apology. Um, there wasn't really much more conversation to that, but they were able to reconnect and they both were smiling at each other and just mm-hmm. seemed to uh, enjoy being in each other's presence again. Nice. Mm-hmm. So Sean and Tiffany talk and they are bonding over their love of sweets and candies. Mm-hmm. But even though it was like a not um, super standout conversation, somebody was connecting with Sean in a genuine way. I need that. And I was just like, finally, I need that. <laughs> Not just talking about Ronnie to Sean, not Harriet being sad about being in two different love triangles, like somebody actually connecting with Sean and just bonding over something. I like it. So I was just like, this was nice to see. Mm -hmm. Then we have Uma and Will. Uma's explaining how she cut things off with her love triangle situation. Mm -hmm. And Will is happy to hear it because she is stunning. And they're both looking forward to getting to know each other. Do you think there will be a thing between Uma and Will? I do. I think just simply because Omar is not, he's too passive. Yeah. And I think Will is the type to where um, he can get Uma uh, away from Omar. Absolutely. Do you think that, do you think she will like Will more than Ayo though? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the whole goal is some factor. Um, is to make Io jealous, mm-hmm. and it just go take the right guy. It's kind of hard to make a guy who's already like six four plus, six six plus, and things like that. It has another interest, you right. know what I'm saying? But I think she can like Will more than Omar. I don't know if she would like Will more than Io though. Mm. So Tiffany and Joey talk. Joey wants to get to know Tiffany and Grace um, apart from Sam. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, apart from Sam, those are the two girls. Like he wants to get to know the new girls, of course. Okay. So he's talking about how he finds her attractive. She finds him attractive. Mm-hmm. So there's there's something there that might be able to get to growing. Okay. So Samantha's over in a corner talking to the girls, talking about how she don't effing care and all this type of stuff. Just throwing a little hissy fit. Yeah. So then we get to playing beer pong and we get dares at, on the bottom of the cups. Mm-hmm. So Grace gets a dare to twerk on an Islander and she chooses Sean. 
I'm happy someone chose <laughs> Sean, man. I am really am. Yes. Uma kisses the biggest player in the house, Ronnie. Ronnie. Samantha kisses the Islander who's just playing games, Ronnie. But she said, I just wanted to kiss Ronnie, Of though. course she did. Of course she did. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't see the Ronnie draw, but apparently he must have it in person. Mm-hmm. Will um, gets to kiss in the order of F, Mary kill. Mm-hmm. So he chooses Nicole, Uma, Samantha. Mm. Kieran has to kiss two Islanders that you'd like to have a threesome with. So he chooses Nicole and Jess. Mm, a, a quick pet. But he would have picked Grace if he wasn't playing it safe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, went, he made sure he went in the corner and said, Grace, mm-hmm. Grace, Grace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Tiffany has to choose who she'd like to have a steamy shower with. And she selects Ronnie. Mm. Harriet kisses who she finds the most untrustworthy. Jess. I like that, Harriet. <laughs> I was like, exactly. I like that, Talk Harriet. about the rats, mm-hmm. okay? Joey has to pick two Islanders to have a three-way kiss with, and he is very distraught about this yeah. because he didn't know what to do. But he chose Grace and Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Chris has to kiss, uh, not Chris, Grace has to kiss the gobbiest Islander in the villa. Mm-hmm. She chooses Joey, and it was a very passionate very, kiss. Very, like old times. Very, very passionate. Mm-hmm. And so, Mantha, she's looking like she's about to cry in the, in the confessional. Of course she is. Listen yeah. here, Joey and Ronnie was having a good time. They started play wrestling. They started <laughs> jumping. I mean, the guys were excited. I was just like, y'all aren't trying to play it cool at all. That was very, mm-hmm. very, very good shakeup. What's your thoughts overall on the episode? I thought it was good. Like even like when the bombshells came in, I thought they were attractive people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't feel like they were overwhelming with their personalities. Yeah. I felt like they fit in pretty nicely. Um, but they turned enough heads to where the conversations that they had went really well. Mm. So I'm excited for the shakeup and, you know, just getting some people on their toes. Me too. Yeah. I'm mostly excited. Um, they made Joey interesting. So Joey's storyline is more interesting now. Yeah. Now that Samantha, you know, now your time, your time, your clock has started. Um, I'm tired of hearing about uh, Ronnie from Jess. But I think, Jess, you are on the outs because mm. I think someone else got the eyes on Sean. Um, Uma and Will, I'm very interesting. I'm very interested in seeing how far that will go. And the Mimi and Ayo thing, this is what I don't understand with y'all two, right? Obviously, y'all y'all are the couple of Love Island so far. Y'all are number one, right? Um, I'll say this. Don't desire each other so much when y'all are not a couple, mm-hmm. right? To where when y'all are finally a couple, now y'all at odds. Yeah. Now y'all not kissing in the bed. Now y'all not talking. Now it's like, I have a problem with your speech. When y'all wasn't a couple, it was a desire for y'all to be together. Now that y'all together, now y'all want to act like, you know, I told them, didn't I? It's just like, nah, you ain't, you ain't going to survive acting that way. You know, anything else? That's all. Make sure y'all come back tonight for Love Island USA. We see y'all tonight. Bye.